Hello friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. Today's video is going to be my long overdue May wrap up. Uh, it took me, it's taken me a while, about a while, I mean a month to get this wrap up filmed. And it's crazy because May was probably like my best reading month yet of like the first five months of the year. Uh, I found some new favorites. I really enjoy a large number of what I read. It's just me and wrap ups and i hadn't updated my spreadsheet so there weren't going to be any stats and i already skipped stats in april and i read so much that it was just daunting to think about filming that wrap up but here we are so first up we're going to start off with the stats for the month of may uh, i literally finished this this morning so all right so in the month of may i attempted 32 books and i finished 28 so four of the books that i attempted were dnfs um i read a total of 10,227 pages and i listened to 77.75 uh, hours of audiobooks i dnf'd four books like i said um the reasons for dnf the non-fiction book i dnf because of the triggering content one book i dnf was for low entry another book that i dnf was because everything is sucky and then uh i dnf four books so that's one two three four so one for triggers two for low entry and one for everything is sucky uh the reading method um let's see Seven books I read exclusively on audio. Uh, four books I listened to the audio book and read physically. Um, eight, or excuse me, six books I read the physical hard copy of. And then 15 I read the ebook. So most of my reading is physical, um, but I just track ebook and um, like physical books separately. Um, and if I own the physical book i'll put physical even if i read the ebook because i'll sometimes like borrow the library copy but that just helps me keep track of like what i'm reading that i don't own physically um next up let's see uh for the book length the majority of the books that i read were between 350 and 400 pages but a lot of them were 300 350 or 250 to 300 pages of the genres that i read 15 of them were fantasy or 46 percent 10 of them were romance for 31 percent three sci-fi one horror one mystery uh and yeah i think that's it so i read across seven different genres one of them isn't listed i don't know it's, it's mystery horror sci-fi fantasy romance so something's missing but that's what we got all oh, because i read some nonfiction, so i'm sure that's what it is um let's see next stat we have i didn't read any translated books this month uh 29 of the books were novels two of them were comics um and then one there's nothing that it says i don't know what's up with my spreadsheet but given that it took me a month to do it, it's what it, what it is. Majority of the books that I read in the month of May were self-published. 18 of them were self-published. I will say 10 of them are in the same series. Um, next up, I have two from Delray, two from Image Comics, two from Berkeley, and then one from a number of other publishers. Uh, I'm not tracking star ratings, so I have nothing for that. One book was Young Adult, 31 were adults. Uh, publication year the majority of what I read this month was published in 2021 so nine of the books in 2021 five in 2022 five in 2017 and then the oldest book that I read this month was from 2014 so mainly new releases of these three of the books were rereads and 29 of them the math ain't math then. 29 of them were books that I read for the first time. Uh, where I sourced these books, 22 of them were from my own TBR. Three were from my library. Six were from KU. Um, and so own TBR also includes ebooks that I own. 
22 books that I read this month or 68% of what I read was part of a series. 10 books or 31% were standalones. I started six new series this month. I read 14 sequels and I finished one series this month. Uh, majority of the authors that I read from this month were white authors. Uh, four of them were people of color and one was unknown. Um, also, like I said, I was just skewed because I read 10 books in the same series, so the same person. Um, what I, the genres, not genres, the genders, I read 15 books by male authors or 46%, 15 books by female authors, and then two books by multiple authors. And so that's the comic um, and um, an anthology collection. Uh, 14 of these authors were new to me and 18 of them I read from before again skewed because one author when I read book one new author and then when I read the next nine books author I read from before uh, the number of books per author that we keep talking about I read 10 books from Will White and then two books from Brian K. Vaughn and the rest of the authors were all varied so I read from a total of 23 different authors this month yeah so that's it on the stats so first up we're going to talk about the books that i dnf'd and the books that i reread the first book that i dnf this is not in chronological order but i don't own this one physically so i don't want to forget about it and that is my body by emily radikowski this is a non-fiction memoir about this woman who isn't who is an actress and model and it is about her relationship with her body and how that has changed and how being in the public image like being a public persona and you know the thing like how her rise to fame as one of the models in the blurred lines video and the controversy that started and overall i was enjoying this to a degree because i feel like novels surrounding body image and and body well whether it's positivity neutrality all those things usually come from people who aren't the ideal image of what a body is supposed to look like so this coming from my model was a very interesting perspective because for all intents and purposes millions and millions of people see her body and that's how she makes her money and you would think that that means that she has a certain type of relationship with her body um and while i was enjoying the discussion surrounding that it just kept tiptoeing into sexual assault and sexual violence and i wasn't expecting that and i find that um with fiction people do a really good job about discussing triggers and uh giving content warnings but i find that, that same attitude does not apply to nonfiction because i've slipped and fallen into several nonfiction books where sexual assault and violence against women is like a big theme and because it's so unexpected i'm just like i'm actually uninterested in that because it just keeps happening and i think had i been prepared for it and it happened the first time i was like okay and then it happened again in the same book and just all in the first 25 percent and i was like actually i want to put this down because i am not in a space where i want to read about that and it just keeps surprising me and i didn't go into it knowing that that was going to be the discussion so that was why i dnf that one but i think that if you are not going if, if that's some type of content that you can handle reading about and that you're in the space to read about i think there's an interesting conversation being had about body image when your body is how you make your money next up i dnf uprooted by naomi novick this is a standalone of fantasy novel and I did I didn't this one for a similar reason so I didn't really know much about what this was what this was going into it but my main thing is I really just disliked the writing I disliked the writing uh I wasn't engaged with the characters I found it very boring and very uninteresting and very just bland I didn't like the direction I saw it going in the relationship between our main character and this like dragon wizard man um I just it's like witches and like paganism and like pagan magic type thing and that's something i just really don't like uh i think i'm gonna do a whole video about things i don't like in books because i discover new things every day um but this like folklore element like is it, written like a folk tale or like that and that's something i'm realizing that i don't like so i dnf this one 100 pages in and overall i feel like i've heard mostly bad things about this i don't think i'm alone in my opinion this is very boring and very uninteresting and unengaging like unengaging um but yeah this is ain't it and i have uh spinning silver and the powder not powder mage but the timorer series by this author so i'm 
nervous about going into those because I dislike this one so much. Um, so yeah. And then a book that I DNF'd for similar reasons to that is The Wolf in the Woods Man by Ava Reed. So this was my Patreon book for the month of May. And I read about half of this before I DNF'd it. And I DNF'd it for the same reason. I don't like witches. I don't like pagan magic. I don't like folklore. And that's new to me. Like I, I knew I kind of was mm, about witches. But I'd heard that the writing was really pretty. And I'd heard that the romance was really interesting. And I am not rooting for this romance. I found that this book, like, the characters are nonsensical. Like literally the logic was indeed like extremely like not logicing. The actions of the characters, the I feel like it was, it was very meandering. Like, where are we going? Where are we? What are we trying to accomplish in this story? I didn't believe in the things that were happening, uh, and it was just so boring. I read it. I tried to read it physically. It wasn't really working. I said, let me get an audiobook a try, and I just detested my listening experience. I was like, I honestly have enough going on in my life, enough going on in the world that I don't want to suffer through this boring ass book. So I did nothing. On to the final DNF for this month, we have the We Hunt the Flame by Hasa Faisal. This is a YA fantasy, the first book in the Sands of Ar Arawaya, I want to say, duology. I read the first 50% of this one before I DNF it. I think I'm going to give this one one more go because I do own the second book and I'm told that the second book is better. And I was listening to this on audio and maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try picking up where I left off and reading it physically. Um, this one, we follow two main characters. One who is the hunter, but she's actually the huntress. It's very similar in a way to like the setup of like Akatar and like another book that I've read. And I'm uh, and like <laughs> the Hunger Games, like this young girl who's a hunter who's out with her bow and arrow, feeding her village. That's a very tried and true YA fantasy uh, setup. And, um, uh, the other main character that we follow is Nasir and he's an assassin and he is the son of the Sultan or some type of whatever. He's like the prince or something like that. And um, both of them have been sent on this quest to find this item to restore magic to this world because they were these sisters and uh, something happened to them and magic has disappeared from this land. But they were so dependent on magic that their society is crumbling and there's like political rumblings because uh, Nasir's father is like trying to be the, he's the Sultan and the Caliph of like various areas and he's trying to do this like hostile takeover situation and it's also a romance between Nasir and um what's her name Zephyr and when I DNF'd it it was like halfway through and they had the, the two POVs had just um come together and so I feel like maybe it'll be better in the second half um but overall like just the beginning I just wasn't invest in the characters i didn't really care about the plot um i didn't feel any chemistry between them where i was like rooting for this romance that the romance was enough to keep me through and the audiobook narration i don't recommend it steve west is great but the lady she wasn't doing it so those are the books that i dnf so now let's talk about my three rereads first two i reread saga volume four and saga volume five um volume four i think was a bit meh but that was the one because it was all about the drugs like them going on the circuit and doing all that and then volume five was a favorite of mine uh i think that one was like a three star and then volume five was like a five star i'm really enjoying my reread of saga uh just being back in this world being back with these characters like the art is so gruesome and bloody and and brutal and violent and I really like that and I'm really invested in these characters because like where we are in the story is was taking place over several years and uh so much has happened and we see the struggles that our our characters are going through and how they keep intersecting and I just really want to see where this story goes I'm really intrigued um but overall I had a really good time with it uh, there's only so much you can say about a comic especially in the series and deep in the series and I don't really want to spoil it for you if you somehow have not read it yet so next up I reread Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This was the book that I selected for my reread out of the reread jar. And I really had a good time with it. So I, I listened to the first 70 pages on audio because that's the slowest bit of the story. Like the weakest part when we first meet Daryl. Um, and then once we got to this like second setting of the story, I read it physically because I knew like the things that were about to happen and meeting some of my favorite characters again. And this was such a satisfying reread. I even like reread re the first 25% of Golden Sun because I was just in the zone. 
um and this is a an adult sci-fi and sci-fi agency really and we follow this main character Dara, who is a red and in his color uh this aside color cast and reds are at the bottom and they have been uh mining this substance called helium 3 which is uh essential for the terraforming of planets because earth is dying and humans need to expand out into the galaxy little do they know it's been generations humans have already like spread out across the galaxy and they are being used as slave labor to mine this helium 3 and we follow our main character Dero, who is put into a situation where he essentially becomes the face of a rebellion almost uh, after like some tragic instances and so this one has a bit of a school competition setting because all the the goals are at the top and every generation all the goals of a certain age they come together to uh to become like a peerless guard the cream of the crop and they are called down to a small number and these are the leaders of the society and he is uh chosen to um destroy the society from within and i absolutely loved it i still this the four star rating still sticks because like the beginning i'm just like mm. but once we get to the institute once we start like the grim brutality, the violence, the vengeance. Like uh, Daryl is so driven and he is a character. I find out a lot of stories. Sometimes we have characters who have these like motivating inciting inc incidents, but they quickly forget about those motivations as they become entrenched in this new environment, this new culture. But Daryl stayed rooted in his motivation for doing it, even as he was building these relationships and the internal struggle between the things that he was learning about these people and getting to know these people and becoming friends and family with these people but also knowing that these people are still the enemy uh that discussion was very interesting and i really enjoyed it and i'm excited to continue on with my reread next up we're going to talk about some ebooks that i read or books that i don't own physically that i did not feature in videos so the first one i want to talk about is omega's obsession by sarah Wu, the second book in the heat haven series and i'm going to do like because I read this May 1st. I'm just gonna read out the notes that I have because it's literally been two months. I said, sadly, this was very mid. I think it would have been better had it been of a similar like novella length because this one was like a 300 pager. Um, for Dean to be the catalyst of the story and the romance, he was definitely the weakest link of this polyamorous like relationship. The author really did way too much with the subplot and introduced so many things unnecessarily. This one lacked the focus of book one. I think that's because it was stretched out to be a full novel. Also, the inclusion of Heat Haven seemed rather pointless because it wasn't the nexus of the story like in book one. It was just like an added element on the periphery. Overall, this was disappointing and I'm unsure if I would continue on with the series. I also think I noticed that like book one was co-authored and then book two was just Sarah Blue. So I don't know if the other author was the one bringing the flavor or what, but this one wasn't that great. Um, the next book I want to talk about is one I read physically, but I don't own it anymore because it was quickly unhauled. And that was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year, the most anticipated romance. Like it was a five star prediction of mine. And wow, it was a one star. Uh, this was not a romance. This was definitely a contemporary novel focused on family and sisterhood and all this other shit that I didn't care about. I didn't care about. I don't, I didn't believe the romance. I don't even think there were enough scenes with the love interest uh and the hero like with the heroine and the hero for it to even qualify as a romance i think that uh miss girl needed therapy and not love i think that m mental health support was the answer to this problem she had uh i think that the relationships between the sisters was unrealistic at best annoying at worst um i think additionally that like for them to be like they didn't read as 32 and 28 i think if like they have been 18 and 22 i might have been able to get with it a little more her relationship to her sister would have made more sense uh the lack like the fact that she was still struggling so much with um the death of her parent her mother and her relationship how it changed with her sister as a result of that would have made more sense if it was fresh but the things that she was dealing with the things that she had yet to deal with didn't make sense for it to have been 12 years ago overall this was just like so disappointing i i think this one should have stayed in a dress 
Um, next up, I read Brutal Daddy by Bianca Cole. This is a dark mafia romance, or like a, a captive romance. And this is just, this is very meh. Like honestly, at two months having read to go, I couldn't tell you anything about it. It was very forgettable. I didn't think it was particularly steamy. The characterization wasn't well done. I wasn't invested in this romance. So I think this is one that you really can pass on. It's like the seventh book in a series, but they're all like standalone. They just all follow like the same like group of mafiosos uh that interact with one another and this one was like stealing the daughter of another group of mob, uh, like another mob family and i just really wasn't invested in it it, it tried to do something it like if you want this storyline go read mafia mysteries it's way better Next up for ebooks, I read uh, Nordic King by Karina Halley. I heard really good things about this one from Riley, from Riley Marie, and I want to say Jess from Peace Love Books. This is like a single dad royalty romance and where he like falls in love with the nanny. And I thought it was cute. I, I generally really like single dad romances because I find that the watching that person fall in love with the person and fall in love with the kids and how that comes together, I really enjoy that. But this one, for whatever reason, it just there wasn't a dis there was a disconnect for me. I wasn't able to really fall in love with the hero i think he was a bit cold um and i i just struggled to really root for them i think it was fine it was a three-star read but with karina Halley, i found that i had more misses than hits with books that were just meh so i don't know that i would pick up from her again the only book of hers that i really really enjoyed was one high italian summer which was another single dad romance so i enjoyed a single dad romance from her before but this one just didn't do it for me it just lacked the flavor um so i think that Karina Halley just might not be the author for me and I don't think I'll be reading from her again. Next up for a Patreon exclusive Wordle chooses my TBR vlog. I read Louisiana Longshot by Jenna DeLeon which is the first book in the Miss Fortune series. Uh, I read it solely on the recommendation of Miss Olivia from Olivia Reese Latte. It's one of her favorite cozy mystery series and this one we follow this girl who is a CIA agent and her last mission she got burned and so she's hiding out in sinful Louisiana and she's pretending to be uh, the granddaughter of one of the members who's passed away and she gets there and she gets embroiled in the sinful lady society and a murder mystery type thing that's happening there uh, and my favorite thing about this is how southern it is and how relatable some of those things are because I'm from Alabama the sickness in Louisiana and like the different things and how the community really the 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 community essentially was like a character in the story and i really enjoyed that i love badass old ladies and um her really like not finding a family but almost like a found family in here and i can definitely see like the sprinkle little tinkle a little bit of like a, a romance that could come of this but it was really fun it was a very short read like it was 250 pages listen to the audio so it was like six, seven or six, six or seven hours on audio. Um, and it took down to be like three hours. So it was a very fun, very quick read. And I think it's a perfect palate cleanser between like some of the more epic or heavy things. And I think that if you're a Cozy Mystery fan and that sounds interesting to you, I recommend picking it up because it's just a very fun book. And there's, there's a lot of them out, at least 12 I want to say. So if you're into it, you can, you have a lot to like look forward to. And then last but not least of the ebooks that I read, I read Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate, the second book in the Salacious Player series. This one, sorry about the motorcycle. This one worked for me so much more than book one. Uh, I thought that praise was just very bland. But Eyes on Me, I read this in one sitting. This is a four star read. It was very hot and steamy. So this one is a bit more taboo. There go to silence. okay this one was a bit more taboo than the first one so be aware of that this one is like a step sibling romance so there's like a bit of an age gap as well so he was like tw in his 20s when their parents got married so he didn't like live at home with them or anything and they never got along like she he was happy that his mom was like find new love but they just all are like, kind of got along like cats and dogs and so he is a bit of a voyeur and one day he is on like a cam girl app and he like goes into this chat room and he sees this person and he's like oh my god like who is this if not my younger sister like my stepsister and then he like starts like a relationship with her online and that she obviously doesn't know that it's him he doesn't reveal his true identity he actually pretends to be one of his friends 
and they kind of grow closer and he decides that he needs a little bit of a vacation and so he heads up to their like summer house and he hasn't been there in a while and sparks fly and it's a bit of a like secret identity as well because she doesn't know that he's the person she's also been talking to so she's struggling like with her relationship with him in real life as well as having feelings for and growing close to this man online not knowing it the same person and i really enjoyed this one this one was just of the three i've read the, the third book since then but i read that in june so we'll talk about that in june wrap up uh i think this is my favorite of the three so far i really like the chemistry between our two characters and i was really rooting for their romance and also there's like a discussion on depression and anxiety and mental health because um our, our hero definitely struggles a lot with depression and anxiety and like suicide ideations and that comes up and the support that he receives from his friends and family i really like appreciate it so overall this is definitely my favorite of this relationship player series and like the cover i think the, the best cover goes to praise but this one was pretty good too next we're going to talk about books that i read physically or books that i own physically that i didn't feature in videos one is a series so we're going to talk about the cradle series at the end because it's 10 whole books and is easy just to say that to the end oh sorry so let me grab the books and then let's get into it first up the this one is featured in a video but it hasn't come out yet and it won't be out for a minute so i'm cool we're just talking about it real quick and that is a shadow in the ember by jennifer l i'm gonna try this is the first book in the flesh and fire series and this arguably is the best written book in the like four books in the from from blood and ash flesh and fire series that are out that i've read it's not the most fun kingdom of flesh and fire was the most fun but this one was the best i think that the writing was the tightest the only problem that i had with this which makes it like a one or two star read is that it is the exact same story that we've already read in the first three books from from blood and ash like if you've read a crown of gilded bones uh you know that like Crown of Gilded Bones like had almost nothing to do with the main plot that we'd been following and it really was just like a 400 pages of prequel to the prequel series which is unnecessary and it's like well, why why are you doing the same work three different times like it's that in from Blood and Ash and in Kingdom of Fish and Fire we get so much story about the first maiden and this is the story of the first maiden but her story and Poppy's story are so similar that it's 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 almost like Jennifer L. Armstrong plagiarized herself. It's like she wrote from Blood and Ash and she knew how sloppy it was and she published it anyway. But then she was like, I want to refine this narrative. And then she wrote this. So this is like the first three books in one story in a much tighter narrative. And so I would actually like not recommend reading from Blood and Ash. I would say just go straight into this one because it's the exact same story. Now, had I not read those and just read these, this was probably at least a three star because I think it was better than those. But ha because I've read those, it's pointless. And so I just don't understand what she was hoping to accomplish there. Um, this is a book that I read for the Vampire Vlog, which will hopefully come in the end of July, beginning of August. Uh, but this just really didn't do it for me because of those reasons. I think it was better written. So I think that if you have no experience in this series, but you're interested, I would say start here and just skip from blood and ash and just read flesh and fire but overall because i'd already read that didn't work for me uh another book that i read in a video but i want to talk about briefly uh because i didn't talk too much about it is legend of lattes by travis baldry this is a five star read for me i enjoyed this so much i read this in one sitting uh this is a slice of life cozy fantasy it's high fantasy with low stakes and it's about our main character orc uh mercenary named div who is retiring from a life of crime and she wants to settle down in a new city and open a coffee shop and so this is all about the opening of said coffee shop uh the trials of entrepreneurship and building like a found family and starting a new life for yourself and it's just so precious i think that everyone has been reading this it's like taking you know the book community by storm it's been picked up by tour you tour and tour uk and it's going to be published traditionally later on this year and we're getting another book in this world but i think this is just a warm hug in the book i think that if you're looking for something cozy something comfortable um something safe to read i think that you want to read this and i recommend having like a cinnamon roll or in a cup of coffee nearby because you're going to want those things like this is a perfect i don't want to say palate cleanser but i think that it's, the, it's just the perfect reset it's what you just want to cozy up with and have a good time when you want to feel like safe and loved and, and warm and fuzzies like this is the definition of the warm and fuzzies this is a five star if i didn't say that 
another five star read another new favorite that i also featured in the may reading vlog that i absolutely love but i want to talk about a little bit more here is will by will smith so this is a non-fiction book a memoir about will smith's life and it chronicles the time from when he's a little boy to his 50th birthday and this book was beautiful it was so moving it was so engaging it was so raw and vulnerable and open it's like everything you want in a memoir and i highly recommend like the, it's not even a highly recommend the audiobook is mandatory you have to listen to the audio because he narrates it himself but also as someone who's a performer who's a comedian who's an actor who's a rapper um all those elements are encompassed in the narrative as well so when he references a song they play the song when he references like a scene a pivotal scene in a movie or or his tv show they play that scene and so like it's just a full cinematic experience like i found myself moved to tears at various points in the story with like how raw and vulnerable and open he was about his struggles with with his abusive parents his struggles with his uh, like self-image and self-worth his struggles in his marriage and being a parent and like him being a parent and failing his children and um things with his life and it's like i am ready for volume two like you know so much has happened since then and uh i think that there's so much more story to be told and like i think this is an amazing volume of history especially as someone who has grown up in this time frame and has been aware of will smith my whole life like reading this really was just a fantastic experience i took my time with it listening to this audio and i just highly recommend this is like one of my new favorite memoirs next up i want to talk about a couple of romances i also read a duke i like to f and this is a short story a romance anthology of historical romance and they all feature dukes overall i don't think this is worth the read uh i think there are only two like good ish stories here and that's the one from ava lee and um the duke makes me feel no an education of, is there's a reading blog for it but this is, isn't very good and most four of the five of these are on KU so I don't think this is worth like the purchase of the physical book but if you want to read them you can read them on KU except for the one and this was just not very good Sierra Simone don't need to write historical romances most of them were just very boring and un like unengaging uh there's a continuation of this series so there's like a villain i like to f which is the newest one and a rake i like to f i don't think i'll be continuing on because i didn't really have a good time with this uh joanna shoop is the only author i'd read from before and we'll read from again but this just overall was a pass it, it was a miss for me i am unhauling that because it's just not the vibe uh i also read the fastest way to fall by denise williams and this is a like running romance i guess the girls call it and so we follow our main character who is a writer and like an editorial assistant at this uh magazine blog website and she is like reviewing this app and she's like a bigger girl and so she starts working with this app and she gets assigned a trainer but little does she know the trainer is the ceo of the company and so obviously like that is forbidden but this is their romance them falling in love there's a bit of a secret identity element because she doesn't know that he's the ceo of the company he doesn't know that she's a reporter writing about his his app and it's their romance i thought this was fine it was cute i gave it three stars it was like a book i read in one sitting so it's a very easy read it didn't move me emotionally like i've seen it do a lot of people but i did enjoy it i think it's a very solid romance and then last but not least the big daddy of my may reading and that is the cradle series i will watch so i own the first book unsold physically and i read the next 10 or the next nine i ran through these like the tomb raider okay this is one of my new favorite series i had such a great time with it like i didn't vlog it i talked a little bit about books either eight and nine or nine and ten in my uh 48 hour book Appleton vlog and book one was featured a little bit in the May reading vlog. But overall, I just read this in private to myself. And I talked about like my thoughts on Twitter. And there are definitely some ups and some downs in the series for me. I have favorite books. I have books that I thought were great. Books that I thought were just okay. Books I didn't love the most. But overall, these this story, these characters, this world is one of my new favorites. Like Dread God comes out uh, July 5th. And listen, Midnight on july 5th i am going to be reading that book that is what i'm the only thing i'm going to be doing on july 5th is reading uh dread god this story is like uh shinsha 
I think, and it's like Chinese inspired cultivation progression fantasy, which I didn't know was my thing, but it is my thing now. Like I, I want more progression fantasy. I want more like level, like I enjoy reading about a good level up. Like we know I love Raider Dragons and that's all about like leveling up and whatever. And like I didn't peep that that's a whole genre book. Uh, and so in this one, we follow our main character, Wei Shi Linden, who is unsold, which means that he doesn't have an affinity for the magic of this world. And so he's treated as like less than nothing. And he's raised in this village called the Sacred Valley. And it is surrounded by these mountains and it's like an eternal dusk, basically. And uh, to them, no society or world really exists outside of the Sacred Valley, but that's not the case. Uh, and he is not like magically gifted or anything in the beginning of the story but he's very determined and he's very cunning and so he uses his wits to like get ahead and i ate this up. So i gave the first book four stars i gave the second book soul smith i want to say two stars but probably like a three because i don't like when my found family gets like split up uh and i did well and i didn't really care about like the central plot i guess of that book like what they were trying to do but as we go on with the series i just had a really good time so i don't want to talk too much about those 10 books because i don't want to spoil it for you but i'm going to quickly pull up um goodreads and like my ratings for each of them uh but i was safe to say that some of my i have a standalone review for cradle if you want to check that out and that i go in a bit more detail but some of my new favorite characters in these series like linden love him yaren love her ethan ethan is one of my new favorite characters 100 like he's everything that i love in like a mentor mentee situation um so the first book we have cradle uh book one which is unsold and i gave that one five stars oh excuse me four stars the second book is soul smith and i gave that one two stars but it was really like a three star but i was just salty um the third book is black flame and black flame is one of my favorites in the series because like each book focuses on leveling up but that one we really really we had like trials and tribulations we had to go through we had like uh like a brother sister best friend bond forming really like really solidifying with yaren and linden and so black flame i gave four stars ghost water which is book five i gave two stars but that was because my found family got split up and I, I was salty but that's actually like a three star book uh underlore i think is my favorite of the series and that's book six and i gave uh this one 4.5 out of five stars um but i gave like a five stars on goodreads uncrowned was really good like the level ups in the action was great but i said it was a bog down a little bit by info dump so i gave that one 3.5 four stars on goodreads bloodline um the the latter books got a lot longer and so like a lot was happening we were getting a lot of world building uh and a lot more about the history of the world because our characters there like horizons were broadening quite a bit uh, so i gave bloodline three stars winter steel the level ups in winter steel i gave though uh that one four stars i really enjoyed it reaper I love the beginning. I've actually gone back and reread the first like 25%. I love the beginning, love the end, but I found that like the, they're on a like, quest and the quest is the entire book. And I just wasn't really that invested in the quest. And so we have two groups of characters that are on the same quest. And so it almost got repetitive and I wasn't as engaged with that one. But like I say, I wasn't engaged, but I read it in one sitting. Like I read all these books back to back. So in like uh, eight or nine days, I read all 10 books. Uh, and then Reaper is like the the last one that's out before Dread God and I just really had a good time and like this Series like gripped me up it held my attention so much that like I was like reading it when I was at work And then I had to, I had like a 50 I had a 15 minute walk from um, My job to the train and I was like I want to be reading this book while I'm walking like I can't stop So I literally got the audiobook so I could listen to it while I was walking like that's how impressed I was like every minute that I was able to be reading i was reading this i ate this up for breakfast lunch and dinner so like so many standout favorites in may we've got will we've got cradle we've got uh legends and lattes like just a fantastic reading month i think like i said this is my best reading month yet like i read 10,000 pages great had multiple five star reads which is so rare for me um just amazing so overall i had a fantastic reading month in the month of may if you made it to the end of this video let's leave a cup of coffee a cup of coffee emoji for legends and lattes and i'll see you in my next one goodbye